Welcome to the seventh video in Indie Resources How to Make a Browser Based Demo Org. This is Halls of Valhalla. In this video, we're actually going to make a store and make the ability to use things out of the store. We're only going to make healing potions this time, but we'll, we'll, we'll add more as we go along. Uh, I am going to kind of shoot through this pretty fast because even breaking it up, it's still going to take three videos to make all this together. And it's not a whole lot, and it's not a lot of complicated stuff. And I will slow down on the complicated stuff, but there's a lot of real easy things we got to do first. First things first is I want to go ahead and show you what it does before we actually do it. So while we're doing it, you kind of understand why we're doing it. Uh, if you notice here, I put two new things in here. Use item and go to store. So let's go to store. And in the store, we have two things for sale, a major and a minor potion of healing. I know the names are corny, but it works. Let's buy a minor potion of healing. We can actually click on buy item, and it'll add it to our inventory. And let me go ahead and fight something first. Let me fight this orc so it knocks some of my hit points down. Okay, it hit me. Five points damage. So you notice my hit points are five. Or fifteen. I'm going to use item. This thing heals hit points for five. So I'm going to use the item. And it says I use the minor potion and my hit points are back to twenty. That's basically all there is to it. Seems like it's really simple, but there's a lot of extra new pages we got to add. The good thing is, is once we build this foundation, we'll be able to start adding a lot more stuff a lot easier. Go ahead and open up <coughs> your... WAMP server, get your my PHP admin open. I'm going to skip a lot of explaining on this stuff we've already explained before. If you don't know how to, to do a lot of this stuff, then you need to go back and watch the videos because everything I don't explain, I've already covered. First thing we want to do is create a new table, and we're going to call it inventory. This is where we're going to store all of our inventory. Each player is not going to have its own table for inventory. All the inventory in the whole game is all going to be stored in this one table. And how that's done is, is by that, that ID. Remember we created a auto increment ID for the players. So every player has its own ID. That's how you're going to be able to find your ID in your actual inventory, which I guess I should have put something in inventory so we could kind of see it. Let's go to store. And basically what it's doing is is my ID of my test player is four. So it's it's saying pretty much place this potion where ID equals four. And then whenever we actually pull the backpack, it will say, when we actually pull the inventory in the game, it'll say all inventory where ID equals 4, or ID equals the ID of the current session to player. And you can see here the ID is 4, and that's how it made it. So basically, go ahead and make your inventory table. It's going to take, what is that, 7 fields, uh, ID, which is going to be a integer of 11, Name, which is going to be bar care of 50. Stats, which is going to be bar care of 30. Stat add is a small integer of 3. Price is an integer of 11. Randed is an integer of 9. And type is a bar care of 30. The next thing we want to make is our store. Make a new table. Call it store. <coughs> it's going to be pretty much close to the same. You have, excuse me, I have a sinus infection. I'm trying to make this video decently quality, but it may not turn out that great. But we'll at least get, the, get it out of the way. Uh... And if you notice, I've already got two things in the store, and we'll go to the structure so we can kind of build this. You're going to have name. You're not going to have ID here. We don't need it. Uh, name's going to be bar care of 50. Stats going to be bar care of 30. Stat ad's going to be small integer of 3. Price is integer of 11. Amount is a small integer of 5. Randed integer of 9. And type is a bar care of 30. Uh, I'm, I shot through this because you can pause the video and go ahead and create this table and get it ready. The only thing, only other thing we need to do, if you noticed, I didn't really show it very well on the, on the actual browser, but if, say I have hit points of 19 and I use a potion that heals 15, we got to have some way of stopping the, the character from, you know, just continually drinking potions and having 400 hit points by the end of the game. The way to do that is to make a new table in players called max HP, and that's going to be the max HP they can have, and then hit points are going to be at their current hit points. So just make a max HP, and then we'll, ha we'll just have to go into our players, and, and if you have a currently player, go ahead and set his max HP to wherever you want. You can just go in by editing right here. But just make max HP in a small integer, an integer of 3 or 6, it doesn't really matter. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start coding. First thing, we're going to be editing a lot of files here. So we want to actually go ahead and open up battle.php first. At the very bottom of battle.php, you will see where I added these, new two these two new lines, use item and go to store. These are real simple. We've already done this before. 
uh, you notice here it's just a href. We're going to go ahead and pass the creature over so that way when we use the item or we buy an item, when we come back, we're fighting the same creature. Yeah, this means that players can edit the URL and change, fight whatever creatures they want. We'll change that later, but for now it's not important. And I'll show you how we change that later. But just make this simple href. So let's start with uh, use item. Let's say we want to use item. Let's go ahead and make it a new PHP file. Just create new and save it as useitem.php. This from here to here is going to be pretty much the same in every single one of our PHP files because it's basically including our connect, session start, querying for the player, getting the day, getting the variable, the get variable of creatures, so that way it, it, we have the creature information, even if we don't use the creature information. And then, of course, we query for the player and get all his information. I, I did put in a new variable here called player ID equals the player input ID. You know, it pretty much equals this, but just to make it easier, let's just put it in one variable to where we know what it is. This next little group is actually new. This is going to print your inventory from here to here is all inventory information. What I've done here is I've created a table. I'm not going to sit here and explain the table because it's better if you go through and kind of play with the table table. Come in here and, and change the table border to one and two and see how it, it fixes it. Change your width this you know you can change your width around your cell spacing, uh all kinds of stuff like that. You can change your alignment and it's better if you go in here and, and manually change it yourself and kind of play with it and you'll get a better understanding. It's not complicated. It's simple HTML uh table. And if you notice let me go ahead and go to the table. And that's basically all the table's doing. And I will show you how I created the rest of the table, the important part of the table. What I've done is is I've started a query, select all from inventory, where ID equals player ID. So basically how I was showing you before, where you're going to have every single player's inventory in that one table, we're going to select where ID equals the actual session ID, who's playing right now. <coughs> then we're going to get that query ready. It's going actually going to get the query in the uh, in inventory info two, and if it can't, it dies, it says cannot select player inventory. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and print this top label right here. How we do that is simple as print. We start with our table. So we start with our main table row, and then we, then we actually create these TD and then a slash TD. That's what creates this box right here. So each box is going to have that wrapped around it, and you can see that's the way we have it. The next thing I did is kind of a hack in my own way. Uh, it's just the way I do it to kind of make it look, I'm not going to say more professional, because right now it doesn't look more professional, but it makes it look a little better. You notice how there's all this space right here? That space wouldn't be there if I, it, it would basically, this box would end wherever our text ends, and that wouldn't look very good. It'd, it'd be, you know, it'd just be right up on it where we could barely see it. So we want a little space there to kind of space it out. But what I did was is I typed a name, and so it's going to print the name, and then I did a font color of white, which is what our background color is. That way, this line right here is not going to be seen. If you were to change this, I don't know what's that, what color that's going to change it to. I don't know the HTML colors by heart. <coughs> May not change it at all. Oh, there it goes. It, it kind of shows it in pink. But see how that line's there now? That's what I'm doing. I'm basically spacing. But if you, so the reason why I'm changing it to white is so you you can't see it. Oops. 